Welcome to part 32. As you can see on our project roadmap, we don't have a huge amount of items left to do. Um, what I'm going to focus on in this video is getting our database set up so we can store content and working on our edit.php file and the view files. So I'm going to open up Firefox and work first on the database. Um, so we have a users table which stores our user information but I also want to create a content table. And it's going to have two fields. And it's going to contain one field for an ID, which is going to be a varchar with 32 characters. And the second one is going to be a content field, and it's going to have the text type. And that looks good, so let me hit save. OK. So, um, that's the basic database functionality that I need and we're going to be using our um, m underscore cms dot php file to interact with this database and save and retrieve data. So to go back to Coda, um, I guess the next place that we need to work on is edit.php. So I'm going to create that file within our CMS folder. So if we open up our login.php file, um, the first two lines are what we're going to use to start edit.php. We need to make sure to include our init.php line, and I need to update the path there. And the first thing to do in this file, uh, similarly like what we did in login.php, is we want to check if the form within this file has been submitted. So I do that with a simple if is set. And I'm going to check for a post variable that I'm going to call field. And this will refer to the main field that we're editing. And else, um, probably the next step that we need to do is we need to make sure that the URLs that we're passing in in the variable, um, excuse me, the variables that we're passing in in the URL are present. So to give you a brief demonstration of that, let me go back and look at our preview. So if you hover your mouse over this link, you notice we're looking at um, a link to edit.php, question mark, and ID, there should be an equals in there, um, ID equals content underscore header, and type equals one line. And um, we're expecting two variables in this URL, an ID and a type. So let me briefly go back to my m underscore cms file. And I'm going to add equal signs here after the ID. I thought I'd fix that in an earlier video, um, but maybe I didn't for some reason. So back to edit.php. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure those variables do exist. So if is set, we're going to check for get ID. So if this particular variable does not exist, so if it equals if is set equals false, or the same thing with the type, we're going to display an error message. And as I talked about in a previous video or two, um, I'm not sure quite how long ago, it was two or three videos ago, I think. Um, we created a function that we're going to be using for this um, purpose. If you open up within core um, models, open up the m underscore template.php file, you'll notice we do have an error function that we can use to display an error message. So to go back to edit, um, we're going to do fp template. error and exit. So that will display an error message if a user for some reason uh, maybe tries to change the URL or insert something they shouldn't, breaks it in some way, um, this will display an error message out to the user. And we're going to follow that by um, doing some things with the ID and the type variables. So I'm going to create a temporary variable that I'm going to call ID. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the ID. So fp, I'm going to call the CMS, 
and I'm going to do a clean block. So specifically clean block ID. I'm going to pass in get ID. And uh, this just makes sure that um, the user hasn't changed this ID value in any way, tried to insert their own information just as a security measure. And the uh, clean block ID, just as a quick reminder, is this function here, um, which changes URL and just makes sure there isn't anything um, incorrect about it. Um, replaces spaces with underscores, dashes with underscores, and uh, removes any non alphanumeric or um, removes anything that isn't A through Z, uppercase or lowercase, or a 0 through 9, or an underscore. So that's the first thing. Uh, we need to clean that block ID because we'll be using it later. And then I'm going to create another variable that I'm going to call type. And I want to make sure that's cleaned as well. So I'm going to use the HTML entities function. And I'm going to put in get type and end quotes like we've done in the past. And the next step after we've cleaned these variables is to actually get the content itself. And um, we don't have a, anything stored in the database yet, and I'm going to hold off on that till the next video. But I'm just going to create a simple content variable that we're going to use later. And I'm just going to assign it to, um, say, content here, just a temporary string. And then I want to create a couple of variables that we'll be using in the next video. Um, in our view. So I'm going to use FP template set data for these. So I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to call block ID. And we're going to pass in the ID variable from up above on line 17. And I'm simply going to copy and paste this line a couple times. We have a few additional variables that we need to pass along to our view. Um, so four instances total, um, actually three, I'm sorry. So we have a block ID, we have a block type, and we're going to pass in the type variable, and we're also going to pass in a CMS field, and this is going to be slightly different, and I'm going to show you how to do this in the next video. Um, we're going to add a third argument here, which I'm going to simply leave as false. And instead of passing an ID, we're going to pass in a function, fp, cms, and it'll be a new function that we'll create in the next video called generate field. And that generate field function has two arguments, a type and content. And just to provide a brief overview of what this does, um, we're setting this variable. We've added a third argument here, which in the next video I'll show you how to do this. Um, basically, it prevents any auto escaping of the content. Um, and I'll, again, I'll talk about that in the next video. And we've added a new function here, generate field. And this is going to create our form elements within our view. And uh, the last thing I want to do in this particular video is load the view. So fp template load, and I'm going to use the at path variable uh, constant, and I'll load CMS views v underscore edit dot php.